And then she puts her little hands together. She's a kitty wants to go. Do women still do that? <laughs> do women still do that? This is Classic Screenshots, episode nine. Nine, 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 nine. Yeah. Yeah. I am your uh, ever-loving host, Henry C. And I am always present and always golden, Queen B. Yes, you are bathed in golden light. Oh, so they say. So they say. So they say. So, 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 when are we having dinner? Uh, I think at eight. That's a good time. Dinner at There's eight. Only, it's a good time. Only if the Ferncliffs show up. Lord and Lady Ferncliff are coming to dinner. <laughs> uh, I, you know, yeah, I'm in a motel room, so the lighting sucks. But guess what? It doesn't mean that the light in my heart ain't good. So let's do that's it. That's right. That's right. The light that's emanating from your eyes. Yes. The sure. eyes are the window of the soul. Sure, sure. I need some good curtains, by the way. Um, so, so <laughs> exact, the blackout curtains. <laughs> I thought about getting blackout curtains. Oh, yeah. you know, mot motels have blackout curtains. It's quite. It's like you don't even know what time it is. Sometimes I'm like, Jesus Christ, how? Oh, the cup of the week, buddy. Look at my cup. I bought oh, this look dollar at store. And goofy, and yeah. is it just Mickey and Goofy? Yeah, dollar store bargain right here. Nice. Very nice. I've got my usual cup of the week here. Oh, my that's very nice. That's very nice. Very, very, very nice. Which I bought for the people who make them, and they also make flower pots and things like that. And it's been, this business has been in their family for hundreds and hundreds of years. Like 800. Oh. Yeah, so it's really fascinating. So I feel like I have a little piece of history that I can enjoy my cup of the week. A little cup of history. That's very sweet. A little cup of history. Little Always. Of history. Tell me about the history of your couple of weeks, because we haven't seen each other here in the studio because you're moving, moving, uh, moving. I'm moving, moving, just moving from place to place and waiting for my um forever home feeling. Um and, and just so I can have those forever thoughts. It's hard to have forever thoughts in 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 transience moments for me anyway. Um, oh man, I tell you, limbo is my least favorite place to be. You know what it oh. is? It's a great game to play, but it's not a great place to live. A little bit low. In a that. little bit of limbo. Um, it's it's. A, I'm learning about the hearts of people, and you know, and this is perfect for the show too. Like the movie, you learn about the hearts of people and what makes people tick and when these things are removed from your life you see the type of person you are like what is the response um and and in this movie dinner at eight um everybody was really you know people wanted to be in the presence of very important people um they wanted to um dress they wanted to know what people were wearing who was still had money they wanted That's to right. live a they wanted to know what people were doing because they felt that whoever surrounded them very com completed who they really were, which is definitely, you know, it's not true. Um, so, you, you know, one it's thing not. I did learn from Dinner at Eight, which comes, you know, without giving too much away before we get in the conversation, is that you might get the invitation, but don't mean that you're going to show up. That's right. It doesn't mean... You don't, it doesn't mean you have to show up. Just yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes you know, life it, doesn't give you the opportunity to show up. You got the invitation, but you know what I'm saying? But you know what? I'm going to Florida. <laughs> I'm going fishing. <laughs> You're going fishing. Amen to that. Exactly. And when the main characters don't show up, what, what is a dinner all about? You know, like, what is a dinner all about? Um, in the opening scene, you see the woman making a call, setting up this wonderful dinner and as you pointed out it's the same it's glenda it's glenda the good witch of the was it north south Honey, it's Where's not she... glenda it's glinda oh well glinda, yeah. tomato tomato hey listen do you want people to call you uh queen g <laughs> if that makes them feel good that's great i i, 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 I hey i'm all good I, I guess i'm a stickler i'm a stickler because i'm in the business and i feel like 
oh, you're in the business. Oh, excuse me for the I rest of the business. You're not in the business. Darling, I'm in the business. Excuse me. It's all about the names, don't you know? Oh, it's all good. All good. Oh, all yes. Good. The actress was Billy Burke. Hey, who plays Billy Burke. The, yeah, she's amazing. She um she plays Millicent. Millicent Jordan. Millicent. And this, this film was made in 1933 just six years before The Wizard of Oz, where she played please, please, please. And she was very famous for a number of reasons. She was a great character actress, Billy Burke, right. um, from her youth. And she was already in her 50s when she did The Wizard of Oz and, and this movie, I believe. Um, but she was known for this sort of airheaded kind of- Yes, spacey feeling. Other, other brain, spacey matron, always very funny, but she has a couple of very, she has some tender moments in this film, I think. What, what I love about Dinner at Eight, it's, it's a pre-code comedy. So a lot of the humor, this is before they started censoring things that you could just never say on the screen. <laughs> um, they, the comedy is very clever and and yet it's not just a comedy, it's a drama, it's a romance, it's got everything you want in a movie. Yes. It's got suicide, it's got high glam. Oh, yes. But, you know, I think what stood out most of it, uh, uh, the movie for me was um, that w the one character who puts his sole worth on the exterior. On the exterior. The, the actor? Yeah, where he lives, he he puts it in who he's married to, the roles he gets. He didn't want to play a vagabond because it wasn't up to his standards. That's right. Larry Renault was the character, yeah. played he, by the amazing John Barrymore. He and did, he, 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 he wanted to, he wanted um, everything he was or who he was was on was represented in the exterior in this exterior facets and then when they were taken away one by one by one you see oh, you see how he crumbles and it's like it's like society you know we put a lot of who we are on the outside opposed to building that 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 beauty from within so no one can topple that you know and, you look at you look at our culture worldwide yeah. today and especially with young people but not just with young people it's with all ages, so much hinges on the number of likes that you get. Amen. So Amen. much hinges on, you know, and please remember to subscribe and like. <laughs> and I would love to support. Like, you know what? I We, we, we love doing this and we know it has a place um, in, 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 in the stream um, to talk about movies and, and talk about their mental health um, impact. And yeah. from days before, because a lot of the movies, I'm going to say there are shitty movies these days. People don't do character development. They don't write the script well. The, 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 the actors they choose are not to fit the role, but to fit whatever game they want in society. And I, it, when yeah. we look at these classic roles, you realize that there was so much more taken time taken into fitting characters and, 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 acting like it is amazing and this is just an aside from any movie that we've watched um i think barring whoopi goldberg because she wasn't as old i'm not talking about the i'm talking about the movies of classic 1933 movies is that um acting was real like you you know these days when people see a you know i don't there was no love making scene in this present movie but i'm just speaking to that is that the imagination was used so much more when it came to acting in 1933. You didn't have to see the coochie on screen to understand they were doing something. You didn't. Well, you I didn't, mean, Jean Harlow is, she was the original blonde bombshell. She was gorgeous. Was gorgeous, voluptuous. Her tits are practically hanging out. She's in all these, you classy, know, classy, and satins. Classy. And, classy. Classy, but then she talked like that. I mean, she's you know, so many other actresses and characters right. based themselves off of not yeah. only Jean Harlow as a person, but also off of this character in this movie. This became iconic, and here it is 2022. And right. in 1933, she is still this portrayal 
is still iconic. Kitty, Kitty Packard. I mean, her name is Kitty. Hello. I mean, that's already an innuendo. Yeah, but you know what? You know, that just plays to the idea, you know, that's you know, unfortunate. Even to this day, blondes are not considered by labels and stigma intelligent, which has nothing to do with the intelligence. But they played a hard, they played a lot up on that. And having her voice like this, oh my God, Henry, why are we going in the movies tonight? I want to go out tonight. You know, you just, you know, you really, <laughs> you know, make, you know, that's, that's where, you know, when you look at blondes, you hear that bubble head bobblehead you know thought but it's not true but she did have she did work her room she got what she wanted she had a level of intelligence that worked yeah that's right she was really in she got we've talked about this before how she used what she had to advance right. herself yes in the way that she could at that time yeah, without guilt. And I think every woman, and we're going, we're, I'm not going to go into it again because we've done this before. We've Watch done it. Two, I believe, or episode two, excuse me, um, where I really believe that, you know, as a as a woman today, savvy woman, I think you should be able to know that you're, if you're, if you believe your assets are, are your tits and your ass, use them. They're yours, right? But don't be mad at the consequences. Yeah. Those are the consequences, yeah. right? Know what you're doing. Know what you're getting into. Yeah, know what you're getting. That's where the intelligence. Power. Know your power. Comes in, right? Let me let me set the stage before we get to picking it apart. What do you mean? You said they already know what's the stage. Go watch the movie. Did you not watch the movie? <laughs> Go watch the movie. It's in not the undercarriage. If you haven't watched it yet. Go <laughs> look. Go look in the undercarriage. Our janky undercarriage. It's all there. The link is there. Go and watch it and then come back and watch us because, I mean, look at the cast, just the cast alone, right? We already talked about the amazing Jean Harlow, who sadly passed away at 26. Yeah, Kitty. what a young thing. So young, young thing. so young. Oh, and, dear. You know, but like like Marilyn, like, you know, so many others that-, that Oh, my God. They became legends almost immediately. Lionel Barrymore and John Barrymore, brothers. Right. They are related to Drew Barrymore, by the way. They're in her family. Yeah, the Barrymore just, family. The great Barrymore family. And they're both in this. John Barrymore is the actor who's right. sort of over the hill uh, at 47, which is like, you know, right. he should have had a whole career after that. And then Lionel Barrymore plays Oliver Jordan, who's married to Billy Burke. Okay. And he's going through um, he's going through some business issues, right? He's like a, a, a magnate. Um, This, uh, something happened. He had, he has a shipping line, right? He's a shipping. Yes, manager. he has a shipping company. I think somebody else wanted to um... buy stock. Yes, that's it. He came in to buy stock. <laughs> I remember the gentleman, the right. guy with the hat. Ugh. Right, because yeah. this this takes place not long after the Great Depression. So this is a this is very timely for that period where businesses were trying to get back to anywhere close to where they were. Right. And so he was a tycoon, a shipping tycoon who right. ended up having to sell off a lot of his stock just so they could have money to live on. And they were living high on the hog. Right. And then Dan Packard, who played, uh, who's, you know, Kitty's husband, Wallace Beery, the amazing Wallace Beery, comes in and he's trying to sort of work his thing. Right. Right. To, he he's nouveau riche, so he's he's he wants to advance himself socially, and so when he hears that the wealthiest couple in England, Lord and Lady Ferncliff, right, are coming to have dinner at the Jordans, and they get invited because they don't have enough people, right, right, and and Billy Burke's character is like, oh, I don't want the you know blonde dummy to come and right and they're like, well we need the people so just call him right it'll be good for your husband to have her husband there right right and so she calls her and she accepts and then he's like he, he he's not interested in going 
until he hears that the wealthiest couple in England, Lord and Lady. Yeah, Burns, she tries like, everything. I'm, she tries all of her little little her little woman woman wiles to get him. She tries so many different ways until finally she says, "Oh, so and so is coming." He's like, "What?" What? <laughs> yes, I seriously thought as much as she was bitching at him, he wasn't gonna go. I thought he was gonna smack her upside the head at one. Well, point. it was a very um, and that's why kind of she really got into his face, like she up in his face. <laughs> And and he even threatens. He goes, "I should take you," and I should. And he was really. Like, I'm like, "Wow, okay, okay." Brother Ben's really angry. Anyways, and then he, you know, they decide to go, um, get dressed up and and all that good stuff. So it's 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 funny how she takes on this man in front of her and says, "You know, I want to go. I don't really care." It's like a little pit bull. I don't care what yeah. you say. I'm, we're going. Yeah, so. we're going. This is what I'm doing. And she's and tried course, little, she tried her little voice. She's like, oh, Kitty really wants to go. <laughs> and then what I love about that is that she sits and thinks about it because she's like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. And she's you like, can see the real starting. Working. And then she puts her little hands together. She's like, Kitty wants to go. Do women still do that? Do women still do that? I don't know if they do, but I know I I don't like that. I would be like shut. I remember the fuck up. I remember that a lot from my childhood, seeing the women around me mm. sort of falling into this little kind of baby wants to do, 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 you know, which is a little crazy, a little icky. To it me, is but. to me. It doesn't. I I I I don't find it even remotely sexy. Like I even I just I just don't. And matter of fact, I think I'm gonna do the rest of the podcast like this. Oh, Henry C., what do you want to do that as a couple? You know what, I think if you're going to do that, I'm going to do that too. Oh, but, yeah. you know, I could just speed it all up and, and, and we'll sound like that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. You know, it would be it'll be interesting to find out where that originated, why women thought that if they put on a little cutie voice, you'll get what you want. You, I, I am not advocating abuse by any means, but you might not get what you're thinking you're going to get with this little cute little voice because it's really fucking annoying. It's really annoying. And I'd be interested, actually, buffs out there. Right. Men, comment down below in the undercarriage. Is that sexy to you when, you're, when your lover starts talking to you in a baby doll voice? And then women... Also, comment in the undercarriage and say, let us know, do you do that to get what you want? Or do you ever put on that kind of role play? I think that it started a long, a long time ago. There's always been this dark underbelly in male-female relations, especially in America, but I'm sure everywhere else too. Right. The whole Lolita thing, that attraction of older men to younger women. Always been. And and getting even younger. Like little girl, that little girl, baby doll kind of Shirley Temple right, right, act. Right. You look at some of Shirley Temple's earliest films, and she's in lingerie at three years old. Yeah. What is that about? Why is that a thing? Nothing. Why? I mean, the movie Lolita is another one about. You know, this is this goes way beyond May December romance, and just you know, spoil. Uh, I wouldn't call it a spoiler alert for this one, but disclaimer, <laughs> disclaimer moment. Um, when we're talking about this stuff and asking questions about it, we're not advocating anything, but we want to get a conversation going around how this affects mental health. When we see an adult character in a film from 1933, right? who's putting on that baby doll act. Right. How does that trigger a person? Well, you know, being a nanny for 16 years and it's just how long I've been there. And I remember um, having many kids at, trying to ask me stuff. And I had a simple rule. I said, you can get the fun, wonderful nanny or you can get the very serious nanny. Now, how do you access these two nannies? <laughs> I was a manny. I used the same tactic. How do you access good? How do you access fun and and go with the flow, uh, nanny? 
well, you, you just enjoy yourself. And one of the rules, which is really funny, was when you want to ask for something, you ask it in your voice and not a your baby voice. voice, right? Just if you want to say, say, um, can I have some candy or whatever it is? They, I'm, I was pretty, you know, I'm, I'm very fair as a nanny. I was a great fucking nanny. I should have been my own nanny. Oh my oh, God, I'm amazing. It was amazing. I was amazing. I was amazing. Yeah, this week to the nannies out there, we say this to you. Thank nannies you. and nannies, both. Cheers, babies. Cheer. Whoops, cheers. 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 Ching, ching. <laughs> cheers. Because, um, and I would tell them, you know, just ask in your own voice. And the moment I heard, like, I don't know. I, I, you, no, 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 no. I, no, I, yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't hear you. No, I can't hear you. So, um, I know as a grown person hearing it from a child, it is the most annoying sound. So, on that, um, it is funny that the character chose that to 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 um, to to get her her point across. I don't remember her even, and I could be wrong. I don't remember because I would more as a woman be more um, apt to, to strip naked and go, baby, I really want to go to that party. She was already in a negligee. She was already yes. sexed up. Her hair was done. She had her beautiful mirror. All her, you know, her face was all done up. I mean, right. And that didn't had, work. If that don't all work, the assets. And if that don't it. work, then we ain't going. Because if I if I get if I get down in my bathing suit and it don't make you say something, then I need to put my clothes back on and go do something else. Because obviously it ain't interested. So you know, the, the, the dynamics this couple had was very interesting. He was very bullish and uh, and um, you can yeah, tell that obviously cool. when she did the baby voice, it obviously it worked at one point. Hence why yeah, she there's something it. about that calming the savage beast, you know. Yeah, there you he, go. He was, Trying to convince him or her right. to. Well, whatever. he was a former miner, so he was low class, and he he's low class gorilla in a tuxedo, basically, right. and right. he's trying to, you know, because he's nouveau riche. He's trying to catch up. He's trying to meet the right people and, you know, travel in those circles and be respectable. Right. And she wants the same thing, but she doesn't have, neither of them have any social grace, which already makes for a very funny situation comedy. Right. Yeah. It's funny that you said uh, my favorite character, and I know you didn't ask, but you were going to. Um, is Carlotta. Carlotta. Oh, I love her. She was great. Carlotta Vance. She was great, especially when that younger woman came in and she gave her that look. Like, <laughs> it was the last scene in the movie. That was the last scene as they're heading into dinner. Yeah, I just, she just and, says, and, and, <laughs> and she says, I was reading a book the other day. And she stopped her track. She's like, oh. what? What? Really, you? <laughs> and how she flirted with the in the first scene, she comes in yes. flirting with the 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 gentleman. Um, just you know, Oliver, on, it, it, yeah. it was nice to see an older woman use her feminine and the way she did it. You know, she kind of cozied up to him and talked. There was no kitty voice in there at all. <laughs> no, and she was. Not a small woman, and she was oozing sex and she sexuality. Was. Usually, comedic actresses of that period right. doesn't matter if you were black or white or Asian, whatever. You were not presented as a sexual character, a sexual no. being, you know. Um, but she really was. She talked about, you know, she was a former lover of uh, of Oliver. Yes, Oliver. Right. Yes, that's his name, Oliver. And there was a little bit of rivalry between Millicent, Billy Burke, right, and yep. uh, and Marie Dressler, who yes. played Carlotta. Now, Marie Dressler was a world famous silent movie actress. And you can tell that she knew how to use her eyes. She knew how to act with her face with no words, it was all body language, posturing, reaction, right? You could tell, but what was great about some of these actors, her her foundation was in the stage and she had a beautiful speaking and singing voice. 
She actually started out doing operetta, I think. Oh, wow. Um, but she had a beautiful speaking voice as well. And so she was able to cross over from silent pictures into the talkies, which were still very new at this time. The first talkies came about in 1929. This is only 1933, right? But she comes blazing in, right, in all her extravagance and wealth. And she wants to buy stock, which they really need, right? She wants to buy stock in the shipping company. Right. But then the other guy, Kitty's husband, doesn't he convince her to buy stock in in his thing right. instead? He was, go he was right. going around convincing people not to buy. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Jordan yes. stock, but to buy his own. And yeah. so it's that kind of backbiting thing. And the fact that they're all coming together for this extravagant dinner party. Dinner at eight. Everything tension underlying yeah the there you go it was the tent the tension it was the the what's that word the uh the crescendo of the whole show it's going to right. you know it which what i found interesting too because i'm jumping to that character the one the um the gentleman that decided that he doesn't want to continue in this journey of life yep larry renault yeah he John doesn't Merrimore. You know, to see the man break was, you know, it, it was, it, it, his toppling didn't happen all at once, you know, so first his wife, you know what I love about it is his wife says to him, um, when you go to the dinner, can you not drink? And this is interesting because we were talking about that earlier before the show, he's like, can you not drink? And as, which I found excellent. That wasn't his wife, that was the daughter of the Jordans. There you who go. Who did not know that their daughter was hanging out with Larry Renault, but they were like, do we have anybody from Hollywood in town? Is there, are there any names? Oh, I think Larry Renault's in town. Let's call him. They didn't know that their daughter was dating him on the sly and that uh, she was okay. going, going to marry him. So they were engaged. Right. I, and, I loved his acting because yeah, when he takes a first drink, you're like, okay. And then he slowly trips over stuff. He slowly slurs. It's acting at its best for me because here in your cool. head, you're not remembering this this guy's drunk, but this guy has it tight. He's just he just slowly slurs and falls. He just slowly falls into his character as this drunk character. I just love it. And he was warned. She's like, please don't drink because you know what happens when you drink. And he's like, oh. And then he had the, the shots that he sh he 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 fills his glass up. It's just ridiculous. I'm like, oh my god, this guy's gonna be drunk. But my point is, his demise comes so slowly, and it's like life. It doesn't all throughout happen. the film. He doesn't yeah. hardly even notice it's happening. His his acting is so subtle. Yeah. But the brilliance of it all is that that's him. That's that the actor John Barrymore playing right. himself. Right. Fair he, enough. He, did, he didn't end up killing himself, but he died right. from from drinking. I mean, oh. he was drunk, and and the daughter and see. So his character is forty seven. I remember him saying, "I'm forty seven and his fiance is nineteen. Right. So here again, we're talking about the older man, younger woman trope that we've seen forever, you know, and is still scene maybe not i don't know do you think it's still to the extent that it used to be because even well, like just, remember Terry grant when he it. got older he was uh, jimmy stewart I, they were always with young women yeah i just want to finish that thought that you know first it's his the, the, his character is taken away that he's now has to play the second rate has because he's been bashing it all week oh i'm not paying blah, 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 blah. and then he has to be in that position and then when that happens then he loses his gorgeous apartment and that's when you just see him go, that's it. And, you know, and I found it very interesting that that's all he had. <laughs> you know, like, you know what I mean? So he loses this pl this play, the, this character. It wasn't play. even his apartment. He it was a hotel room. Right. He loses it was everything. Someone else was coming. Yeah. He loses everything that he held that made him feel important, that made him feel prestigious. And then you realize he was a very shallow man to begin with. Right. Because that's it. That's it. That's all it took for him to to, to take his life out. And not saying that you know, you know, I me being a um, you know at one point in my life wanting to commit suicide. It was like what twenty something, um, and coming out of that and realizing that 
out of that space, I realized I had to put the onus on my insides <laughs> opposed to my outside. And I had to make value. So when you see that, you go, wow. Um, it, 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 you know, that's part of why people don't want to continue in life because they don't feel value. And this movie really highlights that they put all the value around him, but nothing in it. You know, it's so, it, it was just so sad to see him just sit down in this chair and just go, I'm good. I'm gonna yeah, I'm turn on the gas. Yeah, I'm gonna turn on the gas, and, yeah. and and that's it. And I thought, wow, what a! And he wasn't gonna make the invitation, although he got an invitation. Like I said, sometimes you get the invitation, but don't mean you're gonna show up. <laughs> that's right. Exactly. Well, and that that's you know the beauty of that performance as well is that there is a moment where he is drunk off his ass and he's slurring and he's tripping and all that. And then when the manager of the hotel comes in, oh yes. he's really good at acting sober when he's drunk. Yeah. Oh, they could probably smell it on him. Well, of course. But, you know, but the manager and the assistant came in and they were very nice. They didn't want to embarrass him. They said, you know, we have someone else who had booked this room and, and we're going to need to to vacate. And don't it. I know that? Like, and we'll you give you till that. noon tomorrow. We'll give you till noon tomorrow. They were being That's very nice. True. And he yeah, was being very, he didn't fight with them. Right? He didn't fight it saying, well, I'm supposed to be here and I'm not leaving. No, he was like very gracious and everything. And when they left. What he's doing. He knew what he was going to do as soon as they left the room. He knew exactly where to go. So that was his grace. His grace and completely was completely sober. I don't want anybody to know my next step. So that's great. Oh, okay. That's great. You can have the room back. I'll be done in about five minutes. Let me do that. And as soon as he shut the door, he stood there for a moment. And then he grabbed cloth or I think a jacket or a curtain or something. And he put it under the doorway. So and that the cats back. couldn't escape under the door. Yeah. And he did it over there. And, you know, his intent was... His intent was so solid. You know, it wasn't like, I don't know if I should, maybe. Oh, my God. He knew. There was no question. Yeah, he knew that his whole life was wrapped up in not only being an actor, but having or at least feeling the prestige of being important. And once that was taken away from him, he knew that there's no reason for me to live. Like, and, and he it, knew that even though he was in love right. with, with uh, uh, what was her name? Ma uh, Paula Jordan. <laughs> Right. He knew that because she was 19, she'd get on with it. She'd get over it. She'd move on. She was young enough that she had a life, a future without him. Hmm. And he remember he tears her picture. Yeah. And throws it out the window, then closes the window. Yeah. And, and you could just see, and again, he was a silent film actor too. I love this period because oh. so many of the silent film actors were the stage actors were able to cross over into the talkies and and they were still able to bring that depth of emotion through their eyes and through their gestures and their physicality that tells a story without speaking it. Mm. Without having to speak it. And it was so brilliant. Marie Dressler, John Barrymore, Lionel Barrymore, <laughs> Wallace Beery, Billy Burke, these were all silent film stars. So the cast of this is really an exceptional ensemble that was really rare even in that time, right? Yes. And the George Cukor, who directed it, was famous. Did for... any of these actors belong to the United Artists? Because I know that's when Charlie Chaplin and what's her name, Mary? Astor. Yeah, they created that 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 that. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to look that up. Because I because uh, I'm looking at it and I'm like, and I think it was that was it the end of the movie or what was it? Something that made made me think about that. And I said, I wonder if this is the same time because I remember watching a show and they went from silence to talkies, as you said, and that was the same. I think I'm gonna say I'm gonna venture out. If anybody knows, I want to say 1936. That's what I want to say. <laughs> I want to say. I think, you're, I think you're off by about a decade. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I think they started it first when um maybe 26. You know, there you go. Douglas Fairbanks. Um I can't remember if it, I don't think it was Mary Astor. 
um, but Chaplin, they started United Artists. Yes, and I off. think they started it still in their youth. And I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't I, see any movies by that anymore. I don't, I remember at, well, I watched movies in the 80s or even the 70s. God. And, and United Arts is still a thing. I'm yeah. not sure if it was bought out by somebody else or absorbed into one of these mega yeah. Disney companies or whatever. Um, but that that whole movie reminded me of that for some strange reason, and I can see why now because they all came from the silent era, as you mentioned. I can see and why the stage. Happened. Yeah, that reminds me of something. Stage. Why does this movie remind me of it? Now I know why. Now well, I. Know. Now you know. Now you know why. Now you know oh, why. You didn't know that it was a starting. Oh no! Who does it? Jesus Christ! <laughs> well, I love oh. that the whole movie is leading up to this big dinner. Dinner it is. And Billy Burke is all in a tizzy because the the aspic that was in the shape of a lion to represent England, and it was this great achievement <laughs> by her cook, and she dropped it. Yes. The cook dropped it and destroyed it. She's like, oh, now we have to do this and that and this and that. So she's all in it. She can't pay attention to her husband, who something's off with him physically, yes. right, with his health. Turned out he had thrombosis. And nobody knew it. Right. And, you know, and she can't pay attention to the daughter who's trying to tell her about her fiancé. Right, and she's like, I can't deal with your problems right now. You have no idea what I'm going through. She does that. She's she's at the bottom of the stairs. She's like, you don't understand. You just don't understand. She just gets all flustered. She ah. What I'm doing doing with you for this dinner, right? Yeah. And then and then the bomb drops, and she finds out that the Fern Cliffs not coming. Decided instead of coming to dinner, their secretary called and said. They're in Florida. They left for a fishing trip in Florida. So they're, they're not doing. coming. Must be nice. And she tore in to the secretary on the phone. She was like, no, you didn't. How am I supposed <laughs> to have a dinner without the main guest? This is why people are Everybody's coming. Everybody's coming. And she had had such a hard time trying to find enough people to come. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? So yeah. now it was just like... Crazy, and then finally, people arrive. Of course, Larry, the mm. the actor, doesn't show up. Right. Nobody knows why at that point. Right. Until Paula meets with Carlotta in the library, and Carlotta, who was staying in that same hotel, knew what had gone down. Right, and she pulled yeah. her aside and she said, "Honey, we gotta talk." Yeah, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, he's not coming. His table, her seat's going to be empty. You know? She was <laughs> engaged to another guy. She was yeah. going to leave this nice young man, this nice wealthy young man. Right. Right, who could give her everything she could ever want. But she was in love with the, with the actor. And so she, every single character has this inner life and this other story forming that you know all of these whirlpools that are just spinning around in their own and then they're all going to converge in this exactly that's the whole right? i was, I was like, waiting for it. through the whole movie i'm like well we know that dinner at eight is the, is the main plot so what so obviously that's not going to happen so the dinner at eight is a very last 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 scene and everything else plays up into that moment and you know and, and we so, don't even get to the dinner because yeah, the doors so, close well yeah that's what i just said what do you say i'm better when you said i just said the last day it was a dinner brother i said it they closed no the but i just i didn't want people to think that you get to see the dinner no the well the dinner at eight, eight. You don't see, disclaimer you don't see the dinner but you you lead up to that point and then everything up into that point you see these little microcosms that lead up to that moment. And it's just funny because in our all lives, there is a point where we are leading up to. And all the little things are meant to aid in having that great moment, right? So it's just like you, you see, the, 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 um, you know, as, as I said, I, I'm very, I was very attached to that character that, um, that put Larry. his whole wealth or his worth into the external. You know, and I was like, he ain't making it to the dinner. You know what I mean? He ain't make. That's why I got to the right. thought where I said, 
you know, you might be invited and it's a lesson for life. You might be invited for tomorrow. Tomorrow is an invitation, but you may not get there. You know, today you get the invitation, excuse me. Today you get the invitation for tomorrow, but you may not get there, right? Because there's so many things that happen in life. And in my own circumstances right now, you see that are many people who are in situations where mentally they have been invited to see tomorrow, but they just may not make it, you know, depending on what's going. And that's what I, you know, and that's how I see the dinner at eight playing out um, in, um, in real life. We all have, you know, our dinner at eight is that moment in our lives, you know, but will we make it? Will we have the courage? Will we talk silly so we can get there? Will we, will we let life situations take us out? You know what I mean? Like, so there's, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot for me, there was a lot of under underlying messages for them for me. And I think audiences in 1933 were more sophisticated right. than they are today. I think it's rare. Mm -hmm. So brava that you got it. <laughs> I don't know that a lot of people will on the, off the top, off right. the cuff, see that. I think we're in a very different state of, of being as a culture. And, you know, when we look at the level of suicide that has increased over the last decade, right? let alone the last 20 years since the inception of, of the internet, but especially since social media began, I, I see uh, uh, an equation here right. between young people who are influencers or trying to be influencers. See, that's, I think, the difference between you and I and a lot of other hosts out right. there. I don't care if I'm an influencer. I, I, would I love to see more subscribers? Yes, I would love it. Would I love to see thumbs up left and right? Yes. Would I love to see people mashing the bell? Yes. Would I love to see people engaging in this conversation in the comments? Of course. Do I ascribe my personal value or the value of this channel or the value of our friendship based on that, Queen Bee? I don't think so. I would I, not. I have to completely agree with you because- I you know, know I wouldn't. In, in the, it, you know, coming from this generation, I think we're called Generation X. I don't know who the, what the fuck we are. I, don't, I lost track. I don't know I'll, what generation we're, but <laughs> you did say a good point is that, um, because of social media and influencers, that there is a a hole being created that we put our our worth on the outside of us, um, and it's in and it's it can cause suicide because you know you know I hear people are like oh I need followers and I used to chuckle at it years ago like oh followers followers but you've seen them in the news that when followers fall away or their Instagram gets closed, or their YouTube gets closed, they lose their ever fucking loving mind. You're like, easy. And I, I come from a generation, you come you come from a generation that we didn't need that. <laughs> we didn't need it's that. It's true. We You're absolutely right. <laughs> I, mean, I think we should do the rest of it in profile. <laughs> That's a riot. You're so funny. Okay. We didn't need that. We you know when you know when we picked up a paper, like I used to um, deliver the newspaper um, with my brother. Oh, one of the my, one of the most favorite memories with my brother you know, every Sunday um, morning, and we'd get up like at the crack of dawn, like four o'clock, go out of the house, and you'd see the paper. And if the paper sucked, you didn't get a thumbs down. Like nobody walked by your house and goes, "The paper was terrible." I, or mm, you know what I mean? Or I, I just you know. So the the idea that we need external validation is new for me. So it, you know, and we have to we have to change with the times because if we don't um, um, learn that a lot of the generation, the generations after us, really rely on this external acceptance, we could lose a lot of people to suicide, which is played That's in the. Why think, and we are losing people to suicide yeah, because we're, of that. And younger and younger and younger. We've got 13 year old girls and boys who are putting all their eggs in that like basket and follower basket. Yeah. You know, right? and so that's why I think that this conversation coming out of this film is so important because.
there are bound to be either young people who are trying to become influencers who see themselves reflected themselves with a capital s right see themselves reflected in the numbers of followers or likes on instagram or other you know youtube social media they that that when it drops or it hits a plateau right all their self-worth goes away and there's nobody that i've seen out there saying hey kids guess what this is just one medium for you to have a voice in the world mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you reach one person or a hundred million people. It doesn't matter. The fact is that you're doing it. You're putting yourself out there. And hopefully you're putting yourself out there in an authentic way. This is what I love about the whole Fern Cliffs not showing up. Right. They were authentic as fuck. Yes, they were. They, they were, were like, like you don't know we don't want to hang out with these shallow people. We want to go have fun in Florida fishing we're going fishing bye I'm going. I'm going. thanks for your invitation bye. and they That's... didn't even call themselves they sent their secretary to do their dirty work for them i'm like that is the way and to it, do and it it seems like though no, no, that those the characters that didn't show up for the dinner party which was you know orchestrated all around them they seem to have them. the better mental health because they're like i don't need a dinner party i don't need all this i'm just gonna go to florida not feeling it just to, it was simply not feeling it no Sorry, I'm not. And you know what? I've done that. Yeah, I've, I've been invited. I've been, in, I've been invited to places for dinner or to an event, and I've accepted the invitation, totally expecting to go, and then discovering in the eleventh hour that I'm not in the headspace to be around people right now. I cannot do this. I'm and, not doing it. And I'm glad you conversely, said that. Conversely. I have been invited and I've declined and I showed up in the 11th hour because I was feeling like, you know what? I really would like to go to this. So it's okay, buffs, to change your mind. It's okay to change your mind. It's okay to not go if you've accepted. It's okay to go if you've declined. Yeah. Like even in this recording, like there are, you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm transitioning, going through my places and I am like, you know what? Um, Yes, the internet wasn't always at its best, but I sometimes like I'm just I don't want to give less of me. I just didn't I just didn't feel it, and you have to be okay. And I think that's where a lot of the power issue is. Um, the power, the empowerment comes when we realize that we um, we have we can say okay, we can say no, we don't. Blah, blah. People think they have to people pleasing. You know what I'm saying? And you know just and just like the people didn't show up, they're like I'm not here to please people. I just want to go to Florida. And catch my fish. You That's know what right. I'm, saying? I'm going to Florida. Yeah. And you know what? The dinner party is going to still happen without. without that. That. It happened without Larry the actor. No. It happened without the Fern Cliffs. The party still went on, and the world goes round. I want to round and round. And round. <laughs> yeah. I want to throw out just a thought process to all those who are listening. If you are, if you are on YouTube or any um, media platform where you share your voice and you're relying on followers, I want you for a moment just to sit in that space and imagine you not having any followers. Would your message mean the same to you? Would you change your message because you thought nobody was listening to you, or would you continue talking? Um, it's a, something that you, you know, that's a test you should really take to yourself because. This internet is really, um, it, 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 it changes on a dime. And if you don't know uh, who you are before you start these sh the YouTube channels, these TikTok things, um, you could lose yourself. So really ask first question, you sit in, sit in your space for a minute and say, okay, if I did not have the this these followers or I, I, I would I still, my message would still be valid. It should be, um, if not more powerful. Because it's not about who's listening; it's that the fact you're you're saying it, and that's what vibrates in the in the universe. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely, Jean <laughs> And I'm going to give a segue now because I think the same thing goes for transgendered folks, right? Right. Who are considering um, switching their gender, going full operation? Right. There's a rule that you have to know yourself. There's a right. process you have to go through before you change your sex. Reassignment, 
right? Correct. When you when are just a kid, just a person navigating the world, right. and you may be feeling lonely, you may be feeling like nobody understands, and here you have all these beautiful social media platforms for you to put your voice out there. Right. It's For me, I think it's akin to gender reassignment. You are reassigning your place in the world. You're taking an image of yourself, literally and figuratively, and you're saying, hey, world, this is who I am. This is who I am today. And the way you put yourself out there is the way the world perceives you, right? So if you're putting yourself out there with all the right lighting, with all the right makeup, your eyebrows on fleek and, you know, wearing all the, you know, and you're, everything's everything. Is it, is it real? Is it authentic? Is it a mirage? Right? right. So I think that's where when people are, are beefing themselves up to be seen as something that they're not necessarily. And they don't get the feedback. They don't right. get the up. They don't get the likes. They don't get the followers. Um, they see it as a reflection on them. Right, right, right. On their self-worth. It may be a reflection on them because right. people are either not uh, vibing with what you're putting out there, right? Or, you know, the great Judy Garland used to say, don't be a second-rate version of someone else. Be a first-rate first rate version of yourself, Yeah. right? I think that should be a prerequisite to any of you who want to be out there on social media. Yeah, it's a it's a very it's a very um it's a deep pool and if you don't swim um in your self esteem and your power you can sink. Um in your own unique power in yeah. your own unique way. Yeah. yeah, that's what I meant. I know that's what you meant. I just wanted to clarify for myself. <laughs> this is the profile. <laughs> Thanks, Dory. Okay. Um yeah, because you know as I said, coming from a generation with no internet, um, and boy, that really dates me. Boy, I feel so. We like, are those what? people. We are those people. Back in the day, where internet wasn't anything. Back in the covered wagon days. Or, or better yet, hold on, better yet. Back in the day when internet was not there. It's crazy. <laughs> Do you know who else was unapologetically fully <laughs> in herself? Who? Miss Carlotta. Miss Carlotta was fabulous. Heard her little mink, her little fur around her neck. Her and her little, excuse me. She was and just you know fabulous. And when she told him, when she told mm -hmm. Oliver, well, I didn't buy your stock. I bought the other guys. I hope you don't mind. That's okay, yeah. right? And like she's it. just like, she cared about his feelings. Right. But she then did her own thing. Yeah, she I liked her. Kid. I liked her. She was a she she was Girl. a no shit kind of woman, and she she had girth not only in her voice but in her body. Right? She was thick. She was just like I don't know where I need. Yeah. You know what I mean? She had she was she and she still didn't let that diminish her sexuality. Yeah, you know, there's nothing about her. She was just all. She reminded me of so many women that I had have come across in my life who who reminded me like don't don't get don't get don't get caught up in all of that. You know, no. know who your your sexuality is not wrapped up in your age or your or it's wrapped up in you. So don't forget that. I'd be like, God Love damn, okay. you Love know what I mean? So yeah, it was nice to watch her Carlotta. She was refreshing. She was um she was fun and she was edgy. I liked her. She didn't give a rat's ass about it. She was also else. very, very tender and mate and maternal right. toward Paula and having to reveal to her that Larry had had killed himself. She yeah, was she was very most, sweet. I sweet, I want to tell you, you know? understanding, compassionate. Yeah, I just yeah. I, well, you You're know what? I'm not to get him. into um, that again. Not to go back, but you know how he chose to kill himself was very um, um, which was very interesting. You know, he just he laid there, turned the gas on, and he inhaled, just let himself fall asleep. He 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 was very he was very peace at peace with 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 real he really believed that without 
the little room, the the part. He really believed it and he was okay with it. You know what I mean? And he just said, I'm just going to go because he really believed that he couldn't create a new, a new him. He, he believed he just couldn't be him. And I thought that was just so sad to see um, because um, I, I did love his character. I was hoping that he was going to come back and go, okay, I'm going to get a better part. And, and, and all of a sudden he locks the door and I'm like, uh Oh, he's not coming back. <laughs> No. And, and yet, you know, I can also, I know a number of people who have taken their own lives and it's a very, you know, um, it's a very tough choice. And yes, it is. And my, my son who, who had a lot of profundity for being just a kid, mm. he talked about how he had never really thought much about life or death. He never had to. At the age of 12. interesting okay okay he said but i know i know i want to survive my cancer and and yet if it takes my life i'll be equally as happy because i know i'll be able to help even more people maybe not physically anymore but spiritually right. and emotionally he said it's like the last scene in star wars where obi-wan kenobi and darth vader in their final battle and right. obi-wan says if you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than I you could possibly imagine. So right. that was also very interesting for me in knowing John Barrymore's story. Stanley, hi, are you singing? Um, <laughs> knowing that Gene Harlow was going to pass within a couple of years of making this film, knowing the stories of other actors who have either taken their own lives or died young. Uh, I can I can name lists of them. And they pass into the realm of legend when they when they leave young, whether it's by their own hand or, or otherwise, by accident, James Dean in a car crash, you know. Right. Uh, there's something about that journey and, and what Cameron said to me that Papa, we're all gonna have our day and we're all going to have our way right and whether it's an illness like cancer or whether it's an accident or whether it's by your own hand that was your way and that was your day that's it and it's a simple thought but it's also a very profound one that here we have this character who had enjoyed a full career he's in his mm -hmm. you know 50 he was at the top of his game for as long as he could be. And that's how he wanted people to remember him, not playing a minor role in a small film. He won, he, he, and bless his agent who was trying to get him. Trying so trying hard. Trying to keep him like, working. Okay. You know you know what? He goes, you got more power. You're just on the stage and you're just doing this and you're off. It's quick. I like it. Come on, that's <laughs> something. And you can see the guy going, you know, stop fucking with me. <laughs> and then he brought the producer up to meet him. And by that time... Barrymore was three sheets to the wind. Yeah, he was so one. drunk he couldn't do it. He couldn't even, yeah. But that was the reputation oh. that he had just built. Yeah. So there, there was a certain sort of quiet grace that it was a beautiful scene. Yeah. That they didn't shy away from yeah. watching him leave his body. Yeah, just let, let him be. Just he turned it on. And he and was gentle him. on himself. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The yeah. way he killed himself was very gentle. It was very, it was just, it was just very seamless. At least from him, I'm, you know, watching. It's like he's We're like not well, advocating that that is a way. No uh, spoiler alert. I mean, not, is it a spoiler? <laughs> no, it's a disclaimer. But don't spoil your life. <laughs> disclaimer. There's always a way. There's always an answer. You no know, disclaimer. Disclaimer. You know, I would love, and I any, but for anybody who has, you know, I don't know, you can pass this message all. You never know how the universe works. There are people you have not yet met that need you. Yeah. So, and I, you know, and 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 we, I believe that we all have a purpose on this planet to do it. And yeah, sometimes life has a way of throwing you two sheets in this way and that way. But no from within and not because I'm telling you, you are worth so much and I look forward to meeting you. We will meet somewhere through a story, through yeah. an opportunity, somewhere we will meet. And I hope you're there. I hope you're living when we do because it would be really nice. So, you know, it, it really, you know, suicide is something that is permanent. You can't undo it. You, you can't undo it. Once it's done, it's, it's done. You know what I'm saying? You're gone, you're gone. And being a woman who's tried it in her twenties, um, 
it's a scary place to be, but I found the solution was finding my worth and knowing my power from within. From within. From within, from within, from within. within. That's the key. Well, you look at, look at Billy Burke's character when she found out that her husband was essentially terminally ill. Right. And they had just lost everything. They had lost all their wealth, all their pennies, right? They were penniless. And she's there after he's had an episode, right? Where he's fainted and and everything. And he's coming back and the doctor is there uh, who's been having an affair with Kitty, which I think is all very, that's like this whole other side story. The doctor having the affair with Kitty who's pretending like she's sick to get through her life. Um, (laughs) But, but Millicent holds her husband in her arms and says, we'll make it. It doesn't matter. As long as we're together, I'm not leaving your side. We'll get through this. We don't need money. We will. I love that. We'll economize. We'll, we'll do what we need to do. She got on the phone. She's canceling hair appointments. Yeah. You know, and (laughs) she's like, you see, I'm not only putting, I'm only, you know, telling you, I'm showing you. Yeah, and, and then that sounds very familiar to to my own life, where you know we have to we have we oust from one place, and now we're doing from motel motel, and just finding that place, and and that was the one thing that helped us. Like we've got each other, we'll figure this out. We will, whether downside, whatever it is, that we will. This is just a blip in the road, um, and instead of saying what it, why is this happening to us, we say what does the world want us to see? What is it the universe needs us to see? What couldn't we see at the level where we are at? Um, there are many thing, there are many ways to go through. Um, situations that are not comfortable and 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 definitely not being the victim does help you own your power see what's out there see that it's happening for you and you're not being just dragged by your knuckles to wherever you think you're going you you're really walking into your power and that's and and that's and that's one of the the things that um you know that 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 made me smile because at the end of it all you know yes the the strong do survive those who make the choice to live will end up at the dinner table at eight. And that's a beautiful way to wrap up this episode. That no matter what course your life takes, you're going to end up at the dinner at eight. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. In one way or another. Because they're even even the Larry, the actor who died, right. you know there's, they're going to talk about him. So he's going to be there yeah. in his way. He'll be there, be. In, he'll be there yeah. in spirit. Random segue. We did not have one, but I'm putting one right in right now. Random segue. I don't know. You know, I don't know who's ever into cryptocurrency, but I'm putting a little prayer out or a little note to all those that two companies went belly up and it took like $41 million with them. Guys, I know it hurts. It hurts for a lot of people, Um, but hold your head up. Um, things will things will look up. Um, I, I can't say I lost anything in there, but I know a lot of people have lost quite a bit of wealth. So hold your head up and look forward to dinner at eight. All right, fine. Watch, yeah. watch the movie. Seriously, watch we're, the movie. we're, watch we're the not movie. doing this for our own gratification. We really want you. We're not? Are you sure we're not doing it for our own gratification? Ultimately, we are. Ultimately. But, but we do want to build our audience. We want you to yes, watch the movies audience, with yes, us yes. so that you can dialogue with us in the undercarriage, in the comments. And, and remember this, with every, for, 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 uh, for whomever subscribes, every subscriber, you get to get our gorgeous energy, get some really good insights, some, some old classics, and get some laughs. So go ahead, subscribe, and we will notify you every time a new video comes out, no matter what life we're living, because right now I'm in transition, and we are here for you. Remember that. Okay. We're here for you. So, Queen B, what do you think for next week? You think we stick with a similar time in history? Do we move forward? Do we move back to the silent era? What do you want to do next week? Everything is possible. Musical. Ooh, everything is. I would like to do a mute. You know what? You mentioned something. I don't know if you want. If, if I want to do a Python. A Monty Python, darling. With Monty Python, it's still new enough that copyright okay. issues might not All make right, it accessible fine, for free. Monty Python. And it's really you, important. You for, missed an opportunity. It's really important for audiences to be able to access these movies for free. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so let's find. I I would love to do a com- um a um. You comedy? know what? I have never. Comedy? 
really watched a silent movie before. Let's do a silent movie. Ooh, okay. Um, I'll pick a good one. I'll pick a good Better. one. I'll put, it, I'll put it in the undercarriage. You know it's going to be You do good. that. Take care you know of each other out there. Remember kindness. Please, please, please. Oh, kindness. yeah. And you know what? Yesterday was World Kindness Day. So well, let's, there you make go. It world, let's make it World Kindness Life. Let's do it. World Kindness Life. Yes, you got it. Yes. All right. All right. We love you. Thank you, Henry C. Stick for being such See a great co-host. Thank you. Yeah, my favorite co-host of all time. I know. I know. Anyways, sending um, love to you all. Take care. He knows. I know. Have a good day. See you next week. <laughs>